Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to share three tips for writing formulas with VBA macros. So the first tip is understanding the formula property. And in this macro here I have one simple line of code that will input this formula here, this simple sum formula, into cell B10 using the formula property. And the formula property really just has two requirements. First of all, we're passing this entire string of text into the cell. So the string of text will need to be wrapped in quotation marks. So you can see we have a quotation mark here at the end and also the beginning of the formula. And then the other requirement is that the formula starts with the equal sign. So we have the equal sign right there before the formula. And then when we run this code, the quotation marks will not be passed into the cell, just the text within those quotation marks will be passed into the cell, and then Excel will do the calculation of the formula. So we can go ahead and run this macro just to see how this works. I'll jump over to Excel here. First, just delete our existing formula. Then we'll jump back into the VB editor, and we can either hit F5 or the Run button on the toolbar right here to run the macro. And we'll see over here in Excel now that our formula has been input. And if we edit it, we can see that we get our formula text right there. Everything inside those quotation marks has been input into the cell. And then of course, Excel will do that calculation of the formula. And if you have existing formulas in your spreadsheet, another little bonus tip here is to just select the text of that formula, and then you can copy it, control C or right click copy, and then go back into the VB editor and just paste that text within quotation marks for that formula property. So just paste it right there, and that's an easy way to write formulas in VBA. So the second tip is to use the macro recorder for more complex formulas. So in this spreadsheet down here, I also have formulas that contain special characters, like this one here uses an if error and a VLOOKUP, and we can see that we have some quotation marks already in the formula. So this can be a little trick here when we're trying to write our formulas in VBA. But one very simple way to write this formula in VBA is to use the macro recorder. So I'll just go ahead and turn the macro recorder on. We'll start recording a macro here in this workbook. And then all we need to do if we have an existing formula is just edit the formula. So you can hit F2 on the keyboard or double click into the formula. You don't need to make any changes to it and just go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard to enter the formula again. And then over here in the VB editor, we'll see that the VB editor has created that code right here for the formula. And this string of text here for the formula property has those quotation marks built into it. We can see it down here. The quotation marks are right here. And then this is also wrapped in quotation marks. So we really have the first part of the string here is this part right here wrapped in quotes. Then we have two quotation marks. And then the last part of the string, which is the close parentheses in quotation marks as well. So the macro recorder and the VB editor just handle all of that for us. And we don't have to figure out how to write these formulas with special characters. Another example is this cell right here. So in this case, this cell contains an ampersand symbol here. It also contains some quotation marks within the text function. So you can see we have a few different characters here. And if again, we just edit that cell and then hit enter, that the macro recorder will create that code for us. And here is that string of text we need right there. So this again, just saves us some time from having to wrap all of those substrings in quotation marks. And the third tip is understanding the R1C1 style notation. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording our macro here. And you might have noticed in the VBA code that was generated by the macro recorder that instead of having cell references, we have these R and then some numbers here and then C and then numbers as well. And this is referred to as R1C1 style notation. We can also see the formula property that was used is formula R1C1. So R1C1 refers to rows and columns. The R refers to rows, C refers to column. 
and this can be used for both absolute and relative references. So this first part of our VLOOKUP here, if we jump back over to the spreadsheet, we'll see that we have a relative reference to cell A4. And what the R1C1 style notation does is it's just saying go up 10 rows. That's what this means here. The negative 10 means go up 10 rows. If it was a positive 10, it would go down 10 rows. And since these are in square brackets, that lets us know that it's a relative reference. So we're going to go up 10 rows from, in this case, the active cell or whatever range reference you have here. We'll go up 10 rows and then one column to the left. And that creates our relative reference to that cell. So if we were to run this line of code on a different cell, we can just select a different cell over here in Excel. We'll select this cell right here. I'm just going to copy this line of code. It's really just one line of code continued with the underscore character. I'm going to place it in the immediate window here, just paste it there, and then I'll hit enter right here to run that line of code. We can see that our formula is inserted right here in Excel, and if we hit F2, oops, we to close the <laughs> object explorer there. If we go to Excel, hit F2, we can now see that this is referencing A6, because this is a relative reference. It's the same as if you were to just copy this formula down to this cell right here. It'll now go down uh, two cells from that existing cell, or two rows. But really what it's doing is it's going up 10 rows from the cell that the formula is in, and one column to the left. And R1C1 style notation also works for absolute references. So you'll see in our formula here, we have an absolute reference to this range. And we can see that with the dollar signs in front of the column letter and the row numbers here. So this is a range in the table sheet that's an absolute reference. It will not change as we copy the formula to different locations. And in VBA, we have that R1C1 style notation right here without any of the square brackets. So you'll notice our, t our reference here to this range looks somewhat similar, but there are no square brackets there. And the square brackets mean relative reference without square brackets it's an absolute reference. So this is an absolute reference to row two, column 10 in the table sheet, and then row 370, column 11. So again, if we went over to the table sheet here, that's exactly what we'd have here. That would evaluate to J2 to K370. So R1C1 style notation definitely looks a little confusing at first, but it really helps us write more dynamic macros that contain relative references like we saw in this example with VLOOKUP. And again, using the macro recorder to create those formulas and that code will really make this process a lot easier. So I hope those three tips help you write formulas in your VBA macros. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to learn more about macros, then join me for a free upcoming webinar on the seven steps to getting started with macros in VBA. During this training, I'm going to explain how to write your first macro, what order the code runs in, what the dots between the words mean, and some of these complex things that are hard to understand when we're starting out with macros. So this will really help you automate Excel and save a ton of time with your job. So click the link right below this video to get registered for the free webinar, and I look forward to seeing you there.